Hello YouTube. Let me start with this. The radio spectrum is the part of the electromagnetic spectrum uh, with frequencies uh, ranging from 3 Hz to 300 gigahertz. Electromagnetic waves in this frequency range called radio waves are widely used in modern te technology, particularly in telecommunication. The Hertz is the derived unit of frequency in the international system of units and is defined as one cycle per second. Hertz are commonly expressed in multiples, kilohertz, megahertz, uh, gigahertz, terahertz. Well, there was a dis dis significant discovery in 2021, a discovery of a new class of planets, dark, isolated Jupiter mass bodies floating alone in space, far from any host star. This discovery not only confirms that free floating planets exist in outer space, but also indicates that they are quite common. Free floating planets are very hard to detect, so the fact that the survey found up to 10 implies that there are many more that are not detected. The team of scientists that made the discovery estimates that there are about twice as many free floating Jupiter mass planets as stars. This implies that free floating planets are likely to be at least as common as planets like ours that orbit stars. Can intelligent life exist on such planets? And then I remembered a recent open source article of a brilliant Russian scientist, a graduate of the Military Space Academy, who is very much interested in a certain type of aliens. I wonder why. And he wonders what vision such sentient beings can possess. And he states his ideas. The part of the electromagnetic spectrum that the human eye uses seems to be just perfect for use by any living creature. The atmosphere passes waves of this range almost unhindered, and most light sensitive chemicals react well in this particular region of the spectrum. Visible light photons are energetic enough to be detected by the senses, but at the same time they can hardly damage the tissues of our body. The wavelength of these photons is small enough for the eye to be able to resolve even the small objects without distortion. These arguments are quite enough to explain why we see exactly in this range. But what's interesting is that our sun emits maximum energy at this wavelength. It turns out that our vision covers only those frequencies at which the maximum illumination is achieved. That's a coincidence. And how are things with other stars? Yes, exactly the same. All stars that may have potentially habitable planets have peak power emissions within the visible range. Therefore, choosing a star other than the Sun will not change our conclusions. All alien worlds will be dominated by similar wavelength of bright visible light, although this set of the scholars may be slightly different. Therefore, aliens will have to have eyes like ours. Another argument in favor of this is that the radio eye would be difficult, if at all possible, to develop from the point of view of bioevolution, because to achieve the same resolution as the human eye, the organ of vision using radio waves one meter long, 300 megahertz, um, will have to have a diameter of several kilometers. But if you use one centimeter waves, uh, 30 gigahertz, the radio eye will have to have a diameter of only some 40 meters. That's better, but it's still a little uncomfortable. No organism on Earth uses radar as a functional part of its organism. Of course, we cannot rule out that this is the only reason why aliens will also not be able to see in the radio range. And yet, very good reasons are needed for the appearance of such abilities. If we hope to find radar creatures in space, we need to come up with some serious reasons why nature could go to such great difficulties. 
uh, my audience, I want you to listen to this statement that he makes. Probably the best environment for the evolution of radio sensitive creatures is the surface of planets that move in space without being connected to any stars and having some internal heat sources. Surrounded by the cold dark cover of the interstellar void, these worlds can support life and even the mind or intelligence. Radar creatures with antennas 40 meters in diameter may well be found on such planets. The sun does not shine there. All lighting should come from below and most of it will be in the radio range. What will be the radio eye of an alien be able to see in such a world? The sky of such a planet would seem to be filled with weak radiation. Normal stars for us would disappear. All the constellations too. In their place only a few brightly flashing pulsars and quasars will be found. They will be visible to the naked radio eye because of its good sensitivity. Tiny multicolored splashes will mark the places of titanic explosions in distant radio galaxies. The Milky Way would shine like a dazzling ribbon, in the center of which there would be a giant bright sphere. This is the core of our galaxy. Well, so that you know, about 100 lightning flashes on Earth there are every second. Well, in our hypothetical world, the atmosphere would be constantly flickering in the radio range. Radio waves generated by electrical discharges can travel long distances. The horizon of this world will sparkle continuously. The surface of the water will appear shiny and bright. However, the dry surface will be dark. If there are clouds above the planet, they probably will not be visible, because they are usually transparent to radio waves. With the help of radio vision, of radar vision, it will be possible to look deeply inside non-metallic objects heated unevenly. For example, in a living body, blue can be defined as the radio color coming from the hottest parts of such objects, and red is one of the coldest. If radio-sensitive aliens can develop space travel technology, they will be wary of the dazzling brilliance of the stars. If they happen to get close to the sun, they wouldn't like it. Not only will the sun be dazzling for them, but there is also another problem. After all, the total radio stream emanating from our star during periods of intense solar activity can fluctuate in power by as much as five orders of mag magnitude. For radio sensitive aliens, all the stars must seem really very dangerous places, unstable, inhospitable, cruel and very unattractive compared to the calm, majestic peace of the native planet. But suppose for a moment that some reckless adventurer from such a world flew into our solar system in search of life. Rocky worlds will be very poorly visible to him. Therefore, the alien will first see the gas giants. After all, these planets emit bright and colored flashes for him or for her. And then, with proper shielding and access to powerful telescopes, the alien will finally see the Earth. However, when our military radar scans an incoming spacecraft for the first time, it can be interpreted as a declaration of war. Would we like it if we were greeted with a laser with a power of several kilowatts? Well, I ask my audience to pay attention to such studies, considering the source. Young, bright scientists sometimes point the way, sometimes intentionally, to the areas of current research in military space exploration. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to those who support my research. And if you can, you'll find the links in the description to this channel. And I'll bring you more interesting developments in the space exploration that you cannot read on the news. And of course, 
you will not find out in the news channels. Uh, we definitely need to pay attention to China's space exploration efforts, of course the United States and Russia, and the joint efforts that go on away from the news headlines. Definitely something is brewing and we, we need to pay attention to it. Um, please subscribe to my channel, please tell others, and I'll bring you more interesting videos. Thank you.